welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. And you can see I'm just chomping at the bit here. We had quite a turbulent week, uh, lots that we're going to cover. Of course, we will begin by taking a look at the current markets. Where did we close? Certainly coming into the beginning of this holiday shortened week. A lot of bears out there. So we'll take a look at what did take place. And then beyond that, we want to take a look beneath the hood, if you will, and see what may or may not be taking place as far as rotation within those sectors and industry groups. And then we will take a look at hot spots as the conflict between Russia and Ukraine intensifies. There are areas that have heated up quite a bit. So we'll look at stocks in that arena. And then earnings reports still having an impact, as is management's guidance. So volatility throughout the markets, but still earnings driven. And we'll take a look at names in that area as well. Value versus growth. We'll just take a little bit of a look there at those two areas. And then from here, Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the more impactful headline news this week. And of course, all about Russia as they move further into Ukraine in their attack there. So that certainly remains the not only primary driver of the markets. And it's not so much the war that is being so very closely paid attention to. It's more the sanctions that are being very closely watched. Of course, as investors and as citizens, uh, we want to see will these sanctions take hold and uh, hopefully so. We did get numbers relating to inflation, that core PCE price index that came out today. This is an index that the uh, Fed is very closely watching and very much will drive their potential aggressiveness or not as it relates to the anticipated rise in rates coming next month. And it actually came in line with expectations that was welcome in given volatility that we are experiencing elsewhere. Durable goods orders, they did rise in January 1.6%. We did see a rebound in consumer spending and consumer sentiment did increase. And of course, this is all good news. We want to have an expanding backdrop economically, consumers in there continuing to open their purses, if you will. And uh, so that is a nice backdrop to have as we go into and continue to experience a very volatile period in the markets. Next week, not a whole lot. We will get February employment numbers, that's going to be closely watched again, all about whether we are seeing a continued decrease in unemployment. Factory orders are due, that's all later next week. But let's jump into these charts, take a look at what occurred this week. And pretty sloppy chart here. This is the S&P 500. We can see going into the beginning of this week, a lot of deterioration as Russian Russia took action, but the sanctions news did take hold so that the latter part of the week, we did get this nice reversal here. We're going to get more into that and which areas were most impacted. But we did see that on um, yesterday, on Thursday, actually on yeah Thursday, we did see the S&P 500 break below this near-term support, this 4222 level. That was that January 24th spike low. So we did then uh, close above that support area, which was good news. And then a continuation rally into today. This is something I talked about in my MEM Edge report alert report that went out yesterday. It was all about examining the price action yesterday on the prowl for a continuation rally based on the volume characteristics and the breadth. So from here, we can see that this relative strength indicator on the daily chart, the RSI, still in negative territory, but it is heading upward. And that's, of course, what we want to see, the stochastics of faster moving momentum indicator, still in negative territory as well, but again, heading upward. And this I pointed out in my alert report as well. So we will be 
of course, staying very, very closely on top of these broader market dynamics as we closed above this 10-day simple moving average. We certainly still have repair work to do. I will be covering that in my weekend report as far as what to be on the lookout, but certainly promising most certainly relative to last Friday. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at those 11 sectors in the S&P 500. And by doing this, I'll share with you how we can get that candle glance view of the 11 sectors. I'm gonna go ahead and add a relative strength indicator and then sort it descending. We want to see where that relative outperformance is in this, again, very turbulent area and period of the market. So up here in the forefront, we can see energy is still posted up here. It did outperform the markets, but there certainly were other areas of outperformance beyond that. And consumer staples up here in the forefront, that actually was down for the week. But today's 3% rally push this up into the forefront here. So we can see up here a lot of defensive areas up in the forefront as the markets, as investors grapple with what is taking place. But let's take a look at the top performing sector for the week. This is healthcare up 2.7%. And I will get into this uh, by and large a lot in the way of bottom fishing, but also taking a look at some of the higher uh, certainly higher quality names in there that are seeing a bounce and then another area as well. So as we continue to move on, we can see consumer staples, actually the worst performer down 2.1% for the week, really got beaten up here. Tesla was a big underperformer and we can see that it is in the throes of reversing that nice consumer sentiment, consumer spending. There were some bright spots as it relates to earnings as well. So we'll hopefully have time to get into all of this. And from here, let's go ahead and drill down a little bit further and take a look at some of the underlying industry groups in the broader market. So what I have here are some ETFs that are very, from my work, great as a way to really get your arms around where the markets are, what occurred last week. So again, that RSI in descending order, and we can see Brent crude up here in the forefront, and it did get up to 106 per barrel. A lot of that, of course, related to tensions between Russia and Ukraine. Russia, of course, a big exporter, certainly the largest of nat gas, but also energy and their supply to Europe in particular. So anticipation that sanctions, Germany closed the uh, pipeline there. So of course, there will be reverberations throughout this energy space as oil prices are expected to continue to rise. Not great for inflation, but we are seeing a nice turnaround as it relates to energy stocks uh, coming back into favor. Gold up here in the forefront, a big spike. This, of course, is a safe haven area. And it did spike. Let's see what we can do here. I'm going to share with you an intraday chart because going into the open yesterday, a lot of angst in the markets, a lot of fear going into the 24th, which was Thursday. And then as those sanction announcements were uh, came out, Biden and otherwise, we did see the fear drop a bit. We'll look, take a look at the VIX as well. But this is that gap up that we saw into the open, a lot of overnight pent up fear, gold spiked, and then into the day, it can, has continued to decline from that peak in price. Let's go ahead and move on, take a look at some of these other under lying sectors. We can see the yield on that 10-year treasury. It did dip quite a bit, but it closed the week back up here close to that 2% level, which uh, is significant. A lot of movement there. We'll take a look at some of these bank stocks that do respond to these higher yields. And then from here, quick look here at the volatility index. We did close here at about 27 and a half after this is that spike again on the open. I'll just go ahead and share with you an intraday, again, uh, that fear going into Thursday's open as it dissipates. So that's what we want to see. We want volatility to get 
down lower, of course, we're still highly elevated, but certainly below these peaks that we saw earlier in the week. From here, I did want to share with you, I mentioned healthcare was the top performer up 2.7% versus the S&P up 0.8%. One of the shining areas within healthcare was the medical devices ETF. This is IHI. That's the ticker symbol. Those of you that watch this show regularly will know that I follow this because a lot of high growth names in here. And when the area gets going, I'm taking us back to this June into mid-September period. And if we enlarge this, you will see other periods of increase here in this group. So on the prowl for a potential move back into these medical products, but by and large, a lot in the way of bottom fish, and it really has gotten oversold up 5.3%. So one of the reasons, and we'll take a look at some of the bigger names in that ETF, as well as in the healthcare space. Quick look here at banks, because bank stocks really fell out of bed on Thursday. Speculation that those banks, particularly those that had any relationship with Russia, we're going to see a squeeze, if you will, on their profit margins as banking assets were potentially on deck to be uh, held. Nice uh, rally out of there. However, we did see KRE, this regional bank ETF, up 4.6%. So a lot of the banking names in there. Let's take a look on the intraday because this is an area where my MEM Edge report does have select stocks in the banking group that really outperformed this week. But this is what it looked like on Thursday, going into that opening, that thought that Russian assets, banking assets may be uh, held, did cause a significant drop here. But take a look into the close on Thursday. Buyers came in on that dip, and then we saw a nice continuation rally into Friday. So other areas that we can take a quick look at are semiconductors uh, attempting to firm up here, a lot of traffic, if you will, but we are keeping a very close eye on that. RSI poised to turn positive, but we had a lot of head fakes in the semiconductor space. Other area here is software, nice 5.3% rally. I'm going to share with you the strength there and what is taking place. Still too early. We do have a lot more in the way of work there, but there are some constructive names. So what I did want to point out to you as well in this RSI, each of the broader market indices are down here in this lower quartile as some of these sub-industry groupings are jockeying, if you will, for positioning as it relates to money flows into those areas. So I will take a very brief break. When we get back, lots more to cover. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Mary Ellen McGonigal, author of the MEM Edge Report. In my bi-weekly report, I highlight top growth stocks as they enter buy zones. And I educate subscribers on why that stock is attractive both technically and fundamentally. In addition, you'll be alerted to when it's time to exit that stock based on negative technical action. And this bi-weekly report gives you confidence by providing fundamental insights into why an area of the market is strong and which companies within that strong area have the best growth profiles that'll help propel that stock higher. Subscribers to the MEM Edge Report are benefiting from my expertise in uncovering top performing growth stocks. Subscribe now to take advantage of my special trial offer. And we are back. I did mention at the beginning of this show that we are going to be covering some hot spot areas given the conflict and the war that is currently uh, taking place. So one area of vibrancy this week has been, as you can imagine, defense related stocks. So aerospace and defense names. So I will share with you about six names here that are in that space that are holding in well or breaking out of bases. So here we are with Northrop Grumman 
NOC is the ticker symbol. And we can see this nice one month base breakout taking place here today. Nice volume characteristics on the rally. You can see that the RSI remains up here in positive territory. And then that MACD had that black line up through the red cross over earlier this month, but is now up here in positive territory. So keeping an eye on NOC, a number of these names, uh, this particular stock has a 1.5% yield and a 17 times multiple. And that is being very closely watched during this period of high inflation and potentially rising rates. Those areas do tend to uh, higher yielding, lower multiple names will be favored. But certainly during this period of conflict, let's take a look at some of these other aerospace related stocks that are uh, firming up here. Now, this one is very early in its potential. For those of you that are uh, downtrend reversal fans, if you will, we can see that the stock has broken back above this 50-day simple moving average. Your RSI now in positive territory, MACD trending upward. So the stock's currently at 18.7. Your next area of resistance is this blue 200-day simple moving average currently at the 22 level. So we could conceivably see a rally up to that level. It has had a nice move already this week, all about earnings. They came in with numbers that were 38% year over year growth, 22% above estimates. So we'll see if it's able to have a nice uh, continuation rally there. HII Huntington Ingalls, another aerospace related name. This uh, company does work with nuclear and non-nuclear ships, and they were just awarded a naval contract. We can see this is another downtrend reversal, which has now broken back up above that 200-day moving average RSI trending upward. And then the MACD now entering into positive territory. So we did have this shorter term six-week base breakout. And your next level as far as potential bullishness would be a breakout at about this 210 level, which would be a nice five-month potential breakout. Another name that many of you may be Worker with its General Dynamics GD. The company already had been in a nice uptrend. So General Dynamics and uh, Northrop Grumman, both of those are very heavily involved in the satellite program, which is all about cyber security. So they've been awarded contracts actually in January. So we can see GD in a very nice uptrend. Now, of course, today's 4% rally has the stock extended. It is overbought, so look for some pullback, but generally in a nice upward trending period here, RTX is Raytheon, and we can see another name. This is a base breakout, two-week base breakout, big volume. You can see the MACD indicating that this period of consolidation has entered into an uptrend. One last name I'd be remiss to not mention, Lockheed Martin also had been in an uptrend going into this tumultuous period. And then a big brace, base breakout, nice volume characteristics. Take a look at that MACD crossover. So let's move on from here because there are other what I call hotspot areas that are benefiting and in this case, this is going to be companies that also are exhibiting uh, nice earnings. So in particular, let's start out with CHKP. This is Checkpoint Software Security. And so these are companies that do have a defense, if you will, against cyber and other uh, securities with their software. So CHKP, we can see really has had a significant big move. They did come out with earnings on February 3rd. They were above estimates. Most importantly during this earnings season is when a company guides higher in their estimates. CHKP did just that. So we are a bit extended. Let's go ahead and move on to some other uh, software security names that have recently reported their earnings. This is Palo Alto, P-A-N-W. They did report on Tuesday, again, above estimates and guided higher, originally selling off. Now, this was in line with the broader markets, but the markets got on board as the week progressed. We are now poised to break out of this lengthier two-month base, and we could conceivably trade higher 
Uh, I'm going to do a little more work over the weekend as far as drilling down and looking at some more uh, at some shorter term charts to see if we are in a really nice buy point or not. And then here's Fortinet, FTNT, Software Security, came in this week above estimates and guided higher. That guiding higher is really the metric because I'm going to share with you a company that did come in in software security above estimates, but did not guide higher. And you'll see a big difference there. So FTNT, let's look at this chart. We can see that it had a higher low. This is that pullback going into the latter part of the week. And the company has now broken back above each of these shorter term moving averages, super close to a two week base breakout, positive momentum indicators there. So the company actually, as I said, did come in above estimates. But let's take a look at a company that also beat, but did not guide as high as analysts were hoping. This is Zscaler Software Security Company. And we can see that it did have a big drop here. It's down 16% today. Now it was down, I believe over 22%. Buyers are coming in on the dip, but certainly given other uh, examples and other names, uh, not a name that I would uh, begin to get at all interested in. Uh, back to aerospace and defense, I was going to share with you an ETF that uh, has turned positive, not the prettiest of charts, but PPA, and it is the Invesco's Aerospace and Defense ETF for those that want to potentially participate, but not get into an individual security. Let's move on here to healthcare. I talked about that being the top industry group, XLV. We'll take a quick look at it here. Still has more work to do, but your momentum indicators at least certainly heading in the right direction. So some of the bigger names in that XLV ETF, Baxter is one of them, BAX. You can see a breakdown below this 200 day simple moving average. This is something I covered in my MEM Edge report, not this particular stock, but certainly the group dynamics because healthcare by and large is usually viewed as defensive, but a lot of these bigger names were just not getting off the ground, if you will. So a nice V-shaped potential recovery here in Baxter. I will tell you that these companies, uh, in fact, Baxter did come out with earnings on the 17th and they did show 30% year-over-year earnings growth. So I'm going to be focusing, as usual, on these higher quality companies. Uh, J&J, this stock was up 5%, really just to show you it's not on any list of mine, but they did have uh, litigation as it relates to their talcum powder uh, lawsuit, where the uh, government is allowing them to file bankruptcy to be able to proceed through that uh, litigation and investors like the concept that there could be really an end to that. So here's Eli Lilly, LLY is the ticker symbol. They did get FDA approval for a wider audience for their heart valve related medicine. We're not quite back up above that 50 day yet, but your outside momentum is turning positive. Uh, ABT, there are just so many stocks, but I'm really focusing now currently on those larger names in that ETF. And this is Abbott Labs, 23 times on earnings, still has work to do in the way of reversing the downtrend. So from here, we can take a look at some other names that are not heavy weighted. These are more in that IHI, Medical Devices and Products ETF. This is Edwards Life Science EW. They reported their earnings back here in January, and they did have very strong numbers, but fell. Unfortunately, this is what was taking place in the broader groups. That's why it's so critical to be on top of the sub-industry grouping as well as the sector before you uh, wade into a particular stock. So EW now breaking back above that 200 in the throes of potentially reversing its downtrend, definitely on my watch list. It's been a big winner for us in the past. So don't want to miss any potential upside action there. Uh, BSX, Boston Scientific, not the prettiest of charts, but they did report in early February, 96% year over year earnings growth. And we're seeing pretty decent volume on this potential uh, upside move here. 
I'm going to leave it at that for these healthcare names. I did want to, from here, just share with you some of the other movers this week. Uh, one area in particular that I was remiss in not uh, pointing out to you is small cap stocks. Now, again, a lot of work here, but it did find support here at this lower level at the 188 level, I believe. And it was the top performer among these broader indices. So it was up 1.5% uh, relative to the S&P up 0.8%. So keeping an eye on this a uh, nice move into small cap would certainly indicate cons uh, investor confidence, these higher volatility names. Let's take a look at a couple of small cap names in here that had nice moves last week. And this is what you're going to see, a lot of down and out. This is Overstock OSTK, known primarily as a retailer. But the stock had a nice rally. I think it was up 30% this week, but it was all about ICE is investing in their digital currency platform, not so much retail related. The company also came out with earnings. So we could see a potential reversal here. Let's take a look at some other small cap names that are trying to turn because they're in areas that are also trying to turn. This is Renewable Energy Group, R-E-G-I. Take a look at this big volume on this gap up here. Company is due to report their earnings next week. And Renewable Energy was actually the top performing group in technology sector this week. But again, a lot of this down and out. Bottom fishing still has work to do. Another medical, smaller medical company that came out with earnings this week week. Let's take a look here. And uh, again, just a little lot more in the way of work. This is Star Surgical. I'm pointing this out because it was a big winner back here in this 2020 into the mid-21 period last year, but uh, still certainly has work to do. So that's a lot of what we're seeing in the small cap space as it relates to names, but we'll be keeping a very close eye on that. And from here, I would be remiss to not share with you more detailed. Let's see what we are on timing. I'm not going to have a whole lot of time here, but certainly metals, stocks holding in well. This is Barrick Gold Corp, G-O-L-D. I talked about that fizz in the gold group uh, after this latter part sanctions being released, but still in a very confirmed uptrend. Gold beyond being a safe haven area also is a, a wonderful inflation hedge. Aluminum, aluminum pricing hitting a new high. So a lot of these metals stocks are really outperforming the broader markets. This is Nucor and UE. Nice base breakout there. A long, nice base breakout, big volume. So I believe that's it for this week. I do urge you, if you haven't already, use that link below to get a trial from four-week trial of my bi-weekly MEM Edge report with alert reports. This week, I sent out two alerts in addition to those regular reports. Really want to keep you guys on top of the markets, shifts that are taking place, and I urge you to do that. And hit that like button if you like what you've seen. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next Friday. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.